Hi everyone, it's Jerry. I have a nice attacking game to share with you that was played in 1980 between Garry Kasparov on the white end and Slavolub Marjanovic. So this was played at the Olympiad, Kasparov's first Olympiad. A 17-year-old Kasparov for this game. How does he destroy this Queen's Indian defense in only 23 moves? Well, he goes in Gambit style in this one. And that kicks off on this move 7 with d5, the Polgayevsky gambit. What does white get in return for the pawn? Well, a square. f5 is no longer under black's control because of this capture. What white piece will be optimally placed on f5? Knight. White is hopping to it. White is also pinning d5. Black breaks the pin and is now threatening to take here. This is where white now releases the tension. Knight recaptures. White's not going to allow this. There we go. Ten moves in, we have a best piece in the game. This guy here. And he's not easily kicked. If you try and shoo him away with g6, that is, to say the least, super risky to create two dark square weaknesses and maybe be down a dark square bishop. This is how white could continue. This guy right here is probably going to end up being the MVP of the game. You can't play in this way. You really should not play in this way. So, black underdevelops the knight in this one. This guy wants to contribute. Knight c3, d5 met with e4. Two things. Additional pressure on d5 and a path now for the white queen. Speaking of the white queen, this was my main takeaway from the game. Kasparov's play with his queen, or really his patience with his queen. What we can observe in this game are a couple cases where there is a tempting move for the white queen, but he refrains from playing that move. Had he played, a certain move uh, with the queen, it could very easily have resulted in a queen exchange, and with it, an attack that immediately evaporates. Okay, from here we have bishop f6, e takes d, c takes d, more development for white, and knight b to a6. Both players are playing close to a perfect game when I share the graph at the end, you'll see. It's about a flat liner up until this point, up until move 15, really. Uh, I was curious about this last move here. It seemed a little bit weird to me, developing the knight to the edge. I wondered about, you know, why aren't you going to c6 or d7? So let's have a look at these two moves briefly, and we could get a better idea as to what, what the purpose here is of knight b to a6. If the knight went here, White could continue with bishop d6, pulling the rook to a more accessible square to a knight. Chop here, and this is where we could see a knight landing on d6, hitting the rook, hitting the bishop. This is how white could have continued if the knight went d7. And here's an even simpler line. If the knight went to c6, you could take the knight straight away. And white is able to regain the material, pounce in the center with tempo, a position to certainly avoid as black here. Two super strong knights for white. Okay. With knight b to a6, black is staying strong over the d5 square. These ideas by white to swipe the knight and then take on d5, well, not so fast. Black will be recapturing with the knight, and there's more support there. So they are connected. All right, from here, guaranteed productive move. Rook on an open file. Queen d7, still in the computer's eyes, in equal position. However, after Kasparov's move, bishop h3, the computer says the only way to stay in the game is to undo your last move. To go back home, in other words. This is not what black plays in this position. Very difficult for a human to 
uh, play in this way to admit that uh, <laughs> your last move uh, was not a good idea. This is best in this position. In the game, the king goes to the corner. There is a threat here with bishop h3 to land a check and then win the queen. Now, this is one of the points here, this position where it may be tempting to deploy the queen. This is a move that I think may tempt a lot of players. You're pinning a pawn. You're setting up this check. Just like bishop h3, you're threatening to win the queen. But black could play bishop to c8, and it's you know right around the corner. We're probably going to get some queen exchange with this pin on the knight. This is a way we this is a path you could go down, and the queens are simply exchanged. Kasparov goes with bishop h3, abandons this main diagonal. If you're going to play in this way, you have to you should almost always be generating a direct threat to pull this bishop off the main diagonal when this guy is still around you know is there going to be some kind of battery are we going to get mated with the black queen getting down here okay not so fast there is this direct threat with bishop to h3 and black gets out of this check knight h6 any knight move in this position there would be queen takes bishop this is now a winning position for white but with only one move can you spot what this move is after king h8 what does kasparov play here feel free to pause the video okay best move takes advantage of one of these tactical points in the position there is a pin in the position 94 it's the d5 pawn that is pinned the queen is unprotected the knight is poison there is only one defender for the black king on the king's side here this bishop on g6 and white doesn't even want to see that guy around knight e4 the king's side is ready to be destroyed bishop takes pawn follows and no reaction here by the rook you could go with a counter-attacking rook b1 but Kasparov says, let's improve the knight. This is really as good as it gets. Six tempi required to have these knights right where they're at, f5 and g5. They are super powerful. No time to take the rook here. In the game, queen c6 is played. If you take the rook, queen h5. And what are you doing about this? h6 to defend you're definitely getting hit with this one and mate right around the corner okay black plays queen c6 is now the time for queen h5 no this is another point where you could go wrong where it could result in a queen exchange if queen h5 here black has queen g6 this was the point initially i was thinking oh you're setting something up on the diagonal no there's this defensive idea along the sixth rank the queen is covering all the important squares this is considered around an evenish position it's a saving move here for black okay in this game it is first 97 these white knights are not yet done having fun <laughs> 97 hits the queen and takes away this idea to defend with queen g6 queen f6 now do we move the queen you could move the queen in this position and still be winning with queen h5 but that's apparently going to require the following moves if you play queen h5 here and h6 this is apparently the only uh, path, something like bishop here, and then some knight jumping into h6. Some weird moves there. Anyhow, I believe this is like another position where running in with the queen, developing the queen straight away, probably not the best choice. What is white's 
move here. He does play the best move, and that is to take the h7 pawn. Look at these knights. <laughs> Absolute monsters. Landing a fork to the queen and rook. And the knight is poison. <laughs> if you take the knight, now we're finally ready for queen h5. It's hitting with check, and the queen would have to block. The queen is going to fall. It suggests first flicking in a check and then taking. Either way, winning for white. Okay. There are no minor pieces around here helping to defend the king. And white with this last move is stripping black now of pawn defense. It's going downhill fast for black. Queen d4. This is black's reply. I'm ready to get mated. Let's please exchange queens. White says, no way. Queens remain on board. I'm setting up a discovered check. In comes now g6. Another delicate queen move. The only retreating move by white in this game takes a small step back. Queen h4. I, I misspoke. There is one other retreating move, but then it's going to be resignation. Queen h4. If you move forward here, she could be challenged with queen g7. White would still be winning this position, but we're going to have some queen exchange. White is going to be up the piece at the end of all of this, but in this game, it's going to end with the queens on board. One simple step back, white is now threatening to move the knight, land the discovered check. What do you play here in the game? The rook is captured. The computer is suggesting, this is how bad it is, suggesting take the bishop or even take the pawn. That's how bad? <laughs> okay. Any other option besides bishop takes rook? If the king goes here, now you could play to h6 with check and then pick your favorite way. Uh, favorite square to move the knight. All of them will be mate. In this game, it is bishop takes rook and one final move, knight f6. Discover check, black resigns. If the game continued, this is the only move. And now white has the pleasant choice, two mate and twos. Do you want to go with this one, queen h6, bishop g5, or the more flashy knight f5 and queen h6? I don't know. Both are looking pretty good. Either way, black is toast in this position. And look at this final position. Isn't it interesting how every, every white piece is on the king side and nearly every black piece is kind of hanging out on the queen side saying, I want no part of that attack. <laughs> okay. This was a fantastic attacking game here by Kasparov. I hope you enjoyed it. Feel free, as usual, to leave any feedback in the comment section below. And yeah, maybe you took a thing or two away. That's all for now. Take care. Bye.